Today's video concerns truth. I just uploaded this example here, the equality example. There'll be a link in the description below this video on YouTube to this GitHub repo, okay? Which is filling up with some examples on Verilog programming. Let's talk about equality today, right? So uh, what do we got here? Remember that we're dealing with binary systems and zero is false, one is true. We also have unknown values, which can really only happen in simulation. And we have high impedance values. And those can be synthesized in a real circuit as an output. You know, you can drive something to high impedance by disconnecting to it uh, or from it, we should say. And uh, we can drive it to a low impedance and create a one or a zero. But you can't really create an unknown value. I mean, you could argue in theory you can, but not really, um, because it's always going to be a one or a zero, which gets us back to this floating and high impedance value. Even as an input on a binary system, it will have to be interpreted as a zero or one. And floating inputs, like on TTL gates, are always, always, most of the time, they're considered to be ones. On uh, CMOS, eh, they may chatter one and zero, or might look like ground. It depends on the on the type of uh, uh, <laughs> the way the inputs on the uh, circuits are designed. But the bottom line is, an input is going to be a one or a zero, an output is going to be a one or a zero, or it could be floating. The idea that you have an unknown value applies only in simulation, where you uh, are in a situation where the simulation does not yet have an assigned value. And in this domain of these four value uh, binary <laughs> variables, you have to deal with uh, the ability to compare them. All right, so we're talking about this triple equals comparison and the double equals comparison and what the differences are. And the triple equals comparison we're saying that A is the same value of B, including the X and Z uh, values. So if it's a multi-bit value, in other words, you could have a 10X0Z. And this would also have to be then exactly 10X0Z in order to be considered triple equals identical. On the other hand, the double equals identical turns into false if any of the bits in A or B are either X or Z because it becomes an unknown. And then the comparison becomes unknown, which is interesting. <laughs> Compare A to B and end up with X as your, as your result. Now, oh, well, that's weird, right? But that's true. That's how this thing works, right? Uh, you, could, you also have the not equals and the not really equals. I like to consider the triples uh, character ones the really equal as opposed to the you know, similar, right? Uh, okay, so you end up with these uh, weird situations where what does X really then mean if you put it in an if expression like this? If you say if and you have an unknown, it'll always be considered false. So if you have an if expression that looks like this, you will never get here. You will always get here, no matter how you calculated this unknown value. Now let's look at some uh, some code here. Usual kind of a setup. I guess we don't need these multi-bit values. I got an A and a B, one bit variable. And over the course of this thing running, well, there's a lot of junk in this file that we don't really need. So we'll just get rid of it. Okay, so we have this variable A and B. And I'm going to assign it a value like X, and I assign it a value Z, or a 0 and a 1. In order to demonstrate what is truth and what is false, right? So if we have, look at the way this code is written, uh, all these if else's are identical. So all I'm gonna do is say if A, and if A is true, then I'll say it's true, otherwise it's false. And I'll also print out in a one bit binary value, the value of the A reg, okay? So this one would say, uh, if A is assigned an X value, 
and X is always false, it would probably, it better say, uh, it'll say X is false, right? If it said X is true, then I'm confused, all right? So when we say A is Z, turns out Z is also always false. So when we say if A, it won't say it's true, it'll say Z is false. All right, and the same thing with a zero and a one, which should be the only thing that's true about these uh, section of if then else is up here, okay? Then we print a horizontal bar, and then we get into some more complicated things down here. But let's take a look, see, at just these top ones to make sure I'm not crazy. X is false, Z is false, zero is false, one is true. So that matches what the spec says when we are uh, in, uh, considering this stuff down here, right? Okay. Now, for the rest of these, this triple equals, du bang, double equals, and so on, I wrote a few more items so we can demonstrate that to make sure that we're all on the same page. Now, if I say A is unknown and B is unknown and I compare the two, what should really happen? If I say a double equals b, and they're both unknown, is unknown equal unknown? Turns out the answer is no, so it should do this. Is unknown not equal to unknown? So this is a really confusing and interesting part of this whole thing. One might argue that if this expression is false, then how in the world is it that this expression here is not true? Okay? <laughs> So be careful. It turns out when we run this and look closely, this is false. And unfortunately, and fortunately at the same time, the converse is also false. So we're in this weird situation here. Okay, because remember, we're dealing with four different possible states. While our brains are kind of taught historically that, that, that Boolean values have only two possible values. No, <laughs> when it comes to real in the you know real circuits, they can become high impedance. And in simulation, we also consider the possibility of an unknown. Okay, so both of these are going to be false. When we go back and look later. Then what are we going to do? We're going to do the triple equals. Is unknown e uh, triple equals unknown? Well, according to the spec, a triple equals includes the z and x values so it turns out that x does triple equals x and x will not equal <laughs> double equals uh x okay so let's go ahead and run it again and watch closely what happens here to verify what i just said so does x double equal x no is x not equal to x? <laughs> These are the two that really kind of throw you when you first get into this. <laughs> so make sure you got your uh, your head up about you here, okay? So is um, unknown triple equals unknown? Yes, it is, because that's what this operator does. Is it not equal to unknown? No, that's false. So these two kind of go together, but this is the wonky one. And make sure you, you, you got to... Get this, get, learn this, make sure you understand it. Otherwise, weird things happen. And if you look at the rest of the code, all I'm doing is changing the values of the A and B variables and using the same display over and over and over and over again. So we can keep looking at each one of these different uh, things, different combos, and the, these different operators. So now we say, is 0 double equals to x? No, it's not. But the converse is also false, right? Uh, is zero really, really equals to x? No. Is it not equal? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the next one? Is zero equals zero? Yes, it is. Does it not equal zero? <laughs> no, it does not. This one is true, of course, and this one is false. So this makes a lot of sense, finally, at long last, right? Now, what about high impedance? If, does Z e equals zero? No. Does Z not equal? No. Again, one of these weird cases. Is it uh, really equal to zero? No. Is it really not equal to zero? Then yes. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Z, double equals Z, false. The converse is also false. The inverse, converse, whatever you want to think of that. Does Z triple equal Z? Yes, it does. Does it not equal itself? No, it does not. 
Uh, that is a false statement here, right? Is it equal to 1? No. Is it not equal to 1? No. Is it really equal to 1? <laughs> no. Is it really not equal to 1? Yes. And so on. Same, so for sake of completion, I got the 1s. It'll be the same as the zeros because they're known and they make sense at long last, right? And then, of course, for, for closure, <laughs> 0 is equal to 1. No. Is it not equal? True. And so on. Okay? Now, this is going to be a short, sweet little video here, and this is the, the gist of it, okay? The, the bottom line is we need to keep in mind that we have these four possible states that these bool otherwise Boolean things can be in, and when it comes to comparing values, we have the single bit of truth, right? If it's unknown or floating, it's always considered false to Verilog, okay, in simulation. And if it's zero, it's false. If it's one, it's true. And we have two different ways to compare them. Do we compare the four-state values or do we compare the binary, the, the two-state values, so to speak, okay? When you compare the two-state values, if something is unknown, it's always false which is why you end up with these two you know, otherwise kind of kooky things if all you've ever done is program in languages like C and its uh, <laughs> its successors, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we will now apply this as we move forward, especially when we talk about things like case uh, constructs and the always blocks and stuff like that. So short and sweet, quick little video on truth what is truth? <laughs> All right. Oh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.